Okay, as I made a video on here, how to mount this, I, I should show the final result. And a, <laughs> a funny walk through, through my lock band saw. And because here I added now, here is this up down. And that's quite nice. Uh, are we safe? No, oh, we are, we are not yet finished. <laughs> Too early because it detected that this was finished. And so uh, it added 10 centimeters, uh, but these 10 centimeters were not enough. And then I can simply add a 2.5 centimeter. Or a three centimeter. And they all get listed here. It slows down at the end, so it really uh, hits the target. And when going back, I simply uh, need the pop here. And you see, it goes too far and then back because this is really uh, uh, very cheaply here with this uh, steel wires. They are too elastic and I never really uh, uh, made them equally uh, pulling uh, this, this machine upwards and therefore I have to go a bit down and then up again and then here uh, pull a bit to, to get a reliable height. Okay, that's uh, the side here. <laughs> so uh, here uh, I will say something more on, on different uh, sprocket here and afterwards uh, hoverboard. That's the left motor, right motor. I added uh, I added the odometer. Uh, there are two or three different approaches uh, found on on the e Emmanuel Ferrou uh, issues, um, and uh, I choose chose the one the most simple. Added it to my uh, firmware, so I might uh, <coughs> uh, post an issue to ask for uh, upgrade uh, the code. The other thing I added was. Yeah, that after three seconds here, it automatically goes into freewheeling. Uh, don't understand it. There had been uh, quite a few issues over, over time, but I think they never added this feature. And it's simply uh, after three seconds or five seconds, whatever you want in the config dot uh, the, the motors go into freewheeling and you can simply push the machine uh, manually. Yeah, that's the old approach here with this clutch. Uh, um, yeah, it was quite nice. So it, sometimes then it gets too hard. Uh, it's the clutch uh, gives gives uh, gives way to uh, not over overload the motor as uh, mechanics. And here, as you see, this other <laughs> hovercourt powering these big uh, machines. And yeah, there is a here, but it's right now it's not working. All this can be put upward. I need to find a better place for this because it has to be removed. Uh, oh, my smartphone. <coughs> this uh, can simply be uh, pushed upwards. Then we have only the lock. Uh, so, and here this can be moved. Uh, the, oh, okay, but that's. Easy way to easy, easy down here. Simply drilling machine, uh, uh, of the wrong side, and therefore it has to be uh, po positioned absolutely in the middle. And therefore, I invented this nice here. Okay, you see, you get one, one piece of whatever you call it. Uh, and the side stuff. And here it's quite easy. You only have to the entire lock once here in the middle. Um, marking so it's easy to, to position them. So you only do that once and then you can slice an, an entire lock nearly fully automatic. Now it's very easy and convenient with this uh, upside down. Uh, Upwards again. We 
because here I added here even even a, a second that can be moved left and side and this here with a spring going because uh, so that it's not pushed to the right uh, to minimize uh, so I can uh, uh, cut with a very low t uh, tension uh, on these blades because they, if you have some idea why they always rip it's a bit frustrating you see they are quite cheap let's say 25 20 20 dollars 25 dollars but I this should should not be uh, but I have tried lots of different this is a very simple here is a uh, uh, just with two bearings and it's a, they are only in front so that c they can uh, in not uh, uh, here the, usually there are two but uh, here is only one in the front so the uh, the blade can uh, bend uh, according to move backwards uh, where it should be uh, but still these uh, things rip and rip yeah I needed uh, active cooling uh, for this part, yeah, these hoverboard controllers, they can as a 48 volt, a 1000 watt, I, if I remember, I bought the 36 volt, um, 1000 watt as well, they might have as, uh, some other one, they're quite hot, so I can search even more power, because right now I think a 500 watt, this is about a 350 watt um, output, which these are made for. Uh, and here, this, these Cisco are very, very cheap, uh, $30, uh, including shipping, something like that, if you buy three. <laughs> ESP32, uh, controlling uh, these two hoverboard motors. Uh, here, uh, fortunately, relay to interrupt the lock, lock band saw that's inside here there is a, a switch when when this is opened and i simulate that the thing is opened and so the uh, electronics here can really watch i have lots of uh, control uh, checks that if the saw is too slow or if it's drawing too much uh, power and then these here they can i could show you they, 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 if it's too slow then they turn for a second to free uh, uh, the, the the cut and and uh, start again and or if this is too slow the machine stops and so uh, it, it's quite quite nice so it takes yeah 20 to 30 minutes for for a lock which for a slice, which then has a value of um, five to ten dollar, uh, and 20 30 minutes, I can do other stuff. <laughs> uh, cutting this to the wood logs, uh, or uh, well, I have uh, <laughs> okay, then let's go here. Yeah, I don't really know when I will have the happiness to continue here, so. so. <laughs> A big project and you see I, I would like to have this uh, uh, don't really have so much happiness to go on with this microwave oven I think I have to add a, a, a horn a exp exponential horn to uh, so that the microwaves get out this might be a cause but I get a feeling that I really uh, I don't need such a big box because it's uh, too big volume and, and the energy will always dissipate and, and not uh, be focused. And so I think I really need to uh, no box and focus directly onto the wood, only one block. And <laughs> watch at the safe distance. Okay, uh, I made here uh, this last video with uh, how to, to add it here, this, this pocket. And uh, it looks quite ugly as, as you might have. <laughs> noticed uh, very quickly uh, and so afterwards I uh, I remembered that I had another uh, already a uh, video on how to mount where I uh, f drew a, a hole here uh, very nicely with uh, inside bearing and and so um, it, it's if you are uh, I don't counter sink uh, screws I don't know if you this type of screw it's, it's quite easy you see at uh, this six millimeter but uh, 10 millimeter from the inside uh, would be very easy and and then here is something like this is m12 or so, and so on. 
a 10 millimeter uh, making the contact to the thing and and then uh, the sprocket and now you might say uh, okay if, if you, you, this is uh, a countersink uh, I call it countersink right now. I don't know if this is the right word. And then you can, uh, can no longer uh, fix it. But um, you see, with this type, uh, you flatten the, the screws, uh, the windings anyway. So you can put it, uh, push it outside, uh, then uh, screw on the nut, uh, and but fix the screw with a sprocket because the sprocket here is is, is attached uh, with this flattened uh, windings, and then you can simply uh, fasten it from the outside. Uh, that's very simply looking very nice and and so uh, i think the last video is a bit um, strange with so many positive uh, thumbs up but the uh, video really one <laughs> was not that clever uh, you see if you take uh, such a, a screw uh, here with uh, as i said just said here with flattened uh, to, to take this a special sprocket the simple sprocket and you can uh, hold the screw with uh, the sprocket and mount the the nut from from the outside here. Yeah, that's, that's quite far easier and, and, and way simpler. And and when I did look for such a screw in, in 10 millimeter, I found this one. Uh, this is also uh, quite easy. Uh, I mean, I think you have to uh, make it a bit smaller so it can go. I think it's 50 millimeter uh, space inside. Maybe you have to flatten this, but I think that's an, that's an, another two millimeters before the bearing begins. And um, okay, you would have to turn the screw into the square, and you have to be, uh, really do it uh, um, that it's still uh, centered. You see, because you have this uh, square is a little bit bigger than the 10 millimeter, and so uh, when you here uh, make it a uh, square, then you should take care that it's still a square. But then you see that would 100% be uh, attached to to the outside. Um, so there are better ways than here, with, but as I said in the comments or the video, uh, I got this new soldering machine and I <laughs> needed a use case, so I did it the ugly way, but there are better ways. And uh, here to make this uh, the last uh, topic of this video, uh, this is uh, the cheap set, cheapest set you can buy, I think a $15 uh, do a dollar or something like that, a euro. And this is an, another uh, way. and. So it cannot be fixed that simple here by simply flattening uh, the windings. But I don't know if I should uh, make a price of fifty dollar if someone makes uh, makes a video on this, and or if I make a competition and 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 keep uh, keep it right now for me how I would do it. Uh, but um, I think it would be nice. Uh, uh, so this time, no fifty dollar. But I think we should make a, a video of, uh, on, on all these uh, different kinds of sprockets. You see, this is uh, here, uh, I think, the second uh, for these uh, big chains. Uh, and, and, and so <coughs> I just want to say how I would do it. Because you see, the, uh, you might uh, notice these are six. And uh, a screw also has six. So you uh, simply um, take... Uh, such such a one, uh, however you call it, in, in M10, uh, and then uh, uh, no, you take such a one, but uh, fix it in a drilling machine and make it uh, this way. So uh, you see simply the angle grinder holding here and uh, to the side. You could also make it with a with a, a, a nut, and so it's it also um, goes into this um, sprocket and centers it because it is uh, this type but you still see these uh, six uh, points which are same and then it's uh, very simple to take an angle grinder and simply uh, in the middle where it's flat remove uh, some some steel and then you have a combination of of this uh, and uh, and that which should lock into these six points i think it's possible quite easy uh, and then you could again, um, uh, yeah, so I think I, I would do it with a, a, a nut because um, you can either make this from the inside or, or that uh, from the inside as usual, but then you fix it here. Uh, oh, you don't have to because it has this distance, so you simply put it here on top and then fix it uh, here uh, with this screw, which is, is 
it, which centers this, the screw and also locks the screw. Maybe you should indeed put it inside uh, so it cannot move any longer. You see, if you make it the outside, uh, then it could un, uh, unscrew. Uh, maybe uh, you have to look at your use case. If it's a bike and you only need a torque in one direction, then this might be okay. Uh, you might take the left windings instead of right windings, or you simply make a, a, a double knot to, to, to hold this outside knot. So, um, yeah, I think this should not be a problem to mount uh, such a sprocket here. Uh, and, and I tell you this because uh, of this idea uh, that we should uh, offer tutorial videos for all kinds of, of sprockets. It would be a nice uh, help page on my online compiler. Uh, or, well, uh, this idea of this expert system, you uh, can find all the uh, infos and also the, the guys who, who know all the stuff and not only uh, me or Iman. Uh, and and there's this uh, another guy on, on his GitHub, he's very active, he's making these vi uh, wiki pages, uh, an entire wiki on the f firmware, it's, it's very cool. So, uh, if you have, uh, want to learn something, know something about this uh, firmware motors, uh, then check out his, uh, his wiki pages. Yes. Bye bye.